Welcome to American Accent Training. This book and CD set is designed to get you started on your American accent. We'll follow the book and go through the 13 lessons and all the exercises step by step. Everything is explained and a complete answer key may be found in the back of the text. A few words on pronunciation. I'd like to introduce you to the pronunciation guide outlines in the following chart. There aren't too many characters that are different from the standard alphabet, but just so you'll be familiar with them, look at the chart. It shows eight tense vowels and six lax vowels and semivowels. Tense vowels, lax vowels. In some books, tense vowels are called long and lax vowels are called short. Since you'll be learning how to lengthen vowels when they come before a voiced consonant, it would be confusing to say that hen has a long, short vowel. It's more descriptive to say that it has a lax vowel that is doubled or lengthened. Here are the tense vowels, a, take, e, eat, i, ice, o, hope, u, smooth, ah, cot, a, cat, ow, down. Here are the lax vowels, e, get, i, it, u took, uh, some, and the semivowels, er, her, all, dull. Now you try it. Repeat after me. E, oo, a, 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 i, o. Voiced consonants, unvoiced consonants, a consonant is a sound that causes two points of your mouth to come into contact in three locations, the lips, the tip of the tongue, and the throat. A consonant can either be unvoiced, whispered, or voiced, spoken, and it can appear at the beginning, middle, or end of a word. You'll notice that for some categories, a particular sound doesn't exist in English. Chapter 1 American intonation. The American speech music. What to do with your mouth to sound American. One of the main differences between the way an American talks and the way the rest of the world talks is that we don't really move our lips. So when an American says, read my lips, what does he really mean? We create most of our sounds in the throat using our tongue very actively. If you hold your fingers over your lips or clench your jaws when you practice speaking American English, you'll find yourself much closer to native sounding speech than if you try to pronounce every single sound very carefully. If you can relate American English to music, remember that the indigenous music is jazz. Listen to their speech music and you'll hear that Americans have a melodic, jazzy way of producing sounds. Imagine the sound of a cello when you say Betty bought a bit of better butter, and you'll be close to the native way of saying it. Because most Americans came from somewhere else, American English reflects the accent contributions of many lands. The speech music has become much more exaggerated than British English, developing a strong and distinctive intonation. If you use this intonation, not only will you be easier to understand, but you'll sound much more confident dynamic, and persuasive. Intonation, or speech music, is the sound that you hear when a conversation is too far away to be clearly audible, but close enough for you to tell the nationality of the speakers. The American intonation dictates liaisons and pronunciation, and it indicates mood and meaning. Without intonation, your speech would be flat, mechanical, and very confusing for your listener. What is the American intonation pattern? How is it different from other languages? For example, if you hear a Japanese person speaking English, the sound would be very choppy, mechanical, and unemotional to an American. The same way with German peoples. It sounds too stiff. A man from Paris, on the other hand, his intonation goes up at the end of every sentence. 
and has such a strong intonation that he sounds romantic and highly emotional, but this may not be appropriate for a lecture or a business meeting in English. American intonation do's and don'ts. Do not speak word by word. Bob is on the phone. If you speak word by word, as many people who learned printed English do, you'll end up sounding mechanical and foreign. You may have noticed the same thing happens in your own language. When someone reads a speech, even a native speaker, it sounds stiff and stilted, quite different from a normal conversational tone. Connect words to form sound groups. This is where you're going to start doing something completely different than what you've done in your previous English studies. This part is the most difficult for many people because it goes against everything they've been taught. Instead of thinking of each word as a unit, think of sound units. These sound units may or may not correspond to a word written on a page. Native speakers don't say, Bob is on the phone, but say, Bob is on the phone. Sound units make a sentence flow smoothly like peanut butter, never really ending and never really starting, just flowing along. Even chunky peanut butter is acceptable. So long as you don't try to put plain peanuts directly onto your bread, you'll be okay. Use staircase intonation. Let those sound groups floating on the wavy river in the figure flow downhill and you'll get the staircase. Staircase intonation not only gives you that American sound, it also makes you sound much more confident. Not every American uses the downward staircase. A certain segment of the population uses rising staircases, generally teenagers on their way to the shopping mall. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I live in La Cunada. I'm on the pep squad. What exactly is staircase intonation? In saying your words, Imagine that they come out as if they were bounding lightly down a flight of stairs. Every so often, one jumps up to another level and then starts down again. Americans tend to stretch out their sounds longer than you may think is natural. So to lengthen your vowel sounds, put them on two stair steps instead of just one. Instead of, we're here, say, we're here. The sound of an American speaking a foreign language is very distinctive because we double sounds that should be single. For example, in Spanish or Japanese, the word no is, to our ear, clipped or abbreviated. No. And in Standard American, no. When you have a word ending in an unvoiced consonant, one that you whisper, t, k, s, k, s, f, sh, you'll notice that the preceding vowel is said quite quickly and on a single stair step. When a word ends in a vowel or a voiced consonant, one that you say, b, d, g, z, v, j, j, the preceding vowel is said more slowly and on a double stair step. Unvoiced, seat. Voiced, seed. There are two main consequences of not doubling the second category of words. Either your listener will hear the wrong word, or even worse, you'll always sound upset. Consider that the words curt, short, terse, abrupt, and clipped all literally mean short. When applied to a person or to language, they take on the meaning of upset or rude. For example, in the expressions, his curt reply, her terse response, or he was very short with me, all indicate a less than sunny situation. Exercise 1-1, one, one, rubber band practice with nonsense syllables. Take a rubber band and hold it with your two thumbs. Every time you want to stress a word by changing pitch, pull on the rubber band. Stretch it out gently, don't jerk it sharply. Make a looping figure with it and do the same with your voice. Use the rubber band and stretch it out every time you change pitch. Read first across, then down. One. Da da da. La la la. Me me me. Ho ho ho. Two. Da da da. La la la. Me me me. Ho ho ho. Three. Da da da. La la la. Me me me. Ho ho ho. Four. Da da da. La la la. Me me me. Ho, ho, ho. Now down. Column A. Da, da, da. 
Da-da-da. 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 B. La-la-la. 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 C. Me-me-me. 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 D. Ho-ho-ho. 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 Read each column down, keeping the same intonation pattern. A. Da-da-da. A, B, C. One, two, three. Dogs eat bones. Next, column B. Da-da-da. Imprecise. A hot dog. They eat bones. C. Da-da-da. Condition. A hot dog. They eat them. D. Da-da-da. Alphabet. Hot dog stand. Give me one. Staircase intonation. So what is intonation in American English? What do Americans do? We go up and down staircases. We start high and end low. Every time we want to stress a word or an idea, we just start a new staircase. That sounds simple enough, but when and where do you start a new staircase? Statement intonation with nouns. Intonation or pitch change is primarily used to introduce new information. This means that when you're making a statement for the first time, you'll stress the nouns. Dogs eat bones. Exercise 1-2. Noun intonation. Practice the noun stress pattern after me using pitch change. Add your own examples at the end. 1. Dogs eat bones. 2. Mike likes bikes. 3. Elsa wants a book. 4. Adam plays pool. 5. Bobby needs some money. 6. Susie combs her hair. 7. John lives in France. 8. Nellie teaches French. 9. Ben writes articles. 10. Keys open locks. 11. Jerry makes music. 12. Jean sells some apples. 13. Carol paints the car. 14. Bill and I fix the bikes. 15. Ann and Ed call the kids. 16. The kids like the candy. 17. The girls have a choice. 18. The boys need some help. Pause the CD. Practice the patterns five more times on your own using your rubber band. Statement intonation with pronouns. When you replace the nouns with pronouns, old information, stress the verb. They eat them. As we have seen, nouns are new information, pronouns are old information. In a nutshell, these are the two basic intonation patterns. Dogs eat bones. They eat them. Exercise 1-3. Noun and pronoun intonation. In the first column, stress the nouns. In the second column, stress the verb. Fill in your own examples at the bottom. 1. Bob sees Betty. He sees her. 2. Betty knows Bob. She knows him. 3. Ann and Ed call the kids. They call them. 4. Jan sells some apples. She sells some. 5. Jean sells cars. She sells them. 6. Bill and I fix the bikes. We fix them. 7. Carl hears Bob and me. He hears us. 8. Dogs eat bones. They eat them. 9. The girls have a choice. They have one. 10. The kids like the candy. They like it. 
Eleven. The boys need some help. They need something. Twelve. Ellen should call her sister. She should call someone. Thirteen. The murderer killed the plumber. He killed a man. Fourteen. The tourists went shopping. They bought stuff. Hey, call.